the last method for solving quadratics, and that's using the quadratic formula. Now we just derived it a moment ago, so you know it just didn't come from uh, some weird outside source, but it actually makes sense when you complete the square for the for a quadratic in its uh, standard form. ax squared plus bx plus c, when it's equal to zero, you can take the coefficient such that the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a will give you the solutions for x. Okay? Uh, you have to have it equal to zero. Notice that in standard form, the, equa the quadratic equation is all positives. So if you have one with minuses, that's going to make an a, b, or c be negative. And the issue that most of my students have when solving the quadratic formula is making careless errors, making errors uh, involving um, order of operations. So believe it or not, I still think completing the square is easier, but we're going to learn this because it is going to be easier for some types of problems. So the first step is to look at number one and to fill in a equals, b equals, and c equals. First off on number one, everything's already on one side equal to zero, so we didn't have to worry about that step. Elana, what can you tell me are my values of A, B, and C? A is 1. Nice. B is negative 9. Good. And C is 18. Good. Now, on your next quiz, you will be required to write the formula once and then to show the sub-in step every time. So that's what I'd like you to practice today, is showing the sub-in step, where you're substituting the values of A, B, and C into the formula. So I'm going to say the negative, the opposite of b. So the opposite of negative 9 is? Nine. Positive 9, good. Plus or minus square root. This time I'd like you to write negative 9 in parentheses squared minus the 4 is in the formula times a, which is 1, times c, which is 18, all over 2 times a, or 2 times 1. Uh, a couple word to, uh, words to the wise. The, this first term inside the radical, once you square it, will always be positive. If you have a negative value, that means you didn't use your order of operations correctly. When you square a negative, and the negative is in the parentheses, the, the product, as it will, becomes positive. Okay? So, x equals 9 plus or minus negative 9 squared positive 81, put down the minus sign, and then do the multiplication. 4 times 1 is? No, 4. 4 times 18 is? Um, um, 72. Again. So the, if you have trouble multiplying 4 times 18, you can double 18 and then double, double that. So doubling 18 gives you 36, nice. doubling 36 gives you 72. Now still we have to take care of the 2 times 1, which is just 2. Now. The order of operations, really there's invisible parentheses here. So you need to simplify what's under the radical first. So we're going to subtract 81 minus 72 and get 9, and it's under the square root. Now before we can do the plus or minus or even the division, we need to take care of the square root. What is the square root of 9? 3. Now at this point I'm going to separate it. I'm going to have 9 plus 3 over 2. <coughs> and 9 minus 3 over 2. Raise your hand if you have issues with what I just wrote. I took the square root of 9, that's where the 3's came from. Anything oh, else? I'm sorry, I thought, yeah. It's alright, that's why I paused. Yeah. Alright, now we need to um, complete the numerators first, so 9 plus 3 is? 12. Over 2 is 6. And 9 minus 3 is 6 divided by 2 is 3. So we have our two answers, x equals 6 and x equals 3. And yes, this one would have factored, so you just have to pay attention to directions. Sometimes I tell you which method I want you to use, other times you will get to decide. And had I seen this one, there's no way I would have done the quadratic formula, I would have done factoring, because that's much easier. But it really just depends. And you should pay attention to directions and, and know that I'm going to give you some, um, some easy ones to, to practice using the quadratic formula on. Okay. So if you get regular, or if you get rational solutions, don't think that, oh, I must have done it wrong because Mrs. Galvan wouldn't have wanted me to use the quadratic formula on this one. Just know that uh, we're going to mix it up. All right, number two, you need to get everything on, on one side equal to zero. 
So, Henry, what, do, what should I have once I have everything on one side equal to zero? Perfect. So now we have it in standard form. And A equals B equals C equals. Greg Meyerson, what's A, B, and C? 2, negative 3, negative 8. Nice. Now let's show the sub in step. X equals, the opposite of B is going to be positive 3. Plus or minus square root. Negative 3 in parentheses squared. Minus 4 times 8 in parentheses, which is 2. Times C, which is negative 8. All over 2 times 2. Now, this provides us with an example of what happens when one of the, either A or C is negative. Because instead of subtracting under the radical, we're going to end up adding. Okay? So, 3 plus or minus, negative 3 squared is 9. Remember that first term under the radical, always positive. Put down the minus sign. Now, multiply 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times negative 8, negative 64. You carefully manage your negatives. We will end up adding. 2 times 2 is 4. Now we have minus a negative, so that becomes plus. So 3 plus or minus, what is 9 plus 64? 73 is not something that can simplify, so we can leave our answer like this. Now, if you had a problem where I, I tell you to round to the nearest tenth, then this is what you put in your calculator. You would go 3 plus square root 73, then divide it by 4, or start off with parentheses and write down your answer. <coughs> 3 minus square root 73, or put in parentheses, then divide it by 4. Caref be careful about sticking things into your calculator because uh, if you didn't have parentheses, then you just put win head, didn't press enter, and went ahead and divided by 4, then the calculator would have only divided root 73 by 4 and not the sum root uh, 3 plus root 73. Okay? So be careful about that. All right, go ahead and turn the page. Yes. Uh, it's another practice like this. I suggest that when you're choosing which side to move your terms to, that you move the, your terms to the side that will keep x squared positive. So I'm going to have 0 on this side. I'm going to add 2x. And I'm going to subtract 5. That's another way, too. If you, have, if you put it on the other side and notice that your x squared term was negative, then by all means, uh, then divide out the negative 1. So A equals B equals C equals. Leslie, what's my A, B, and C? Um, 1, Good. So x equals negative b, so we finally have a negative uh, out in front, plus or minus square root of 2 squared minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is negative 5, all over 2 times 1. That's how you show the sub in step, and I will ask that you do that on quizzes. So negative 2 plus or minus b squared is 4, put down the minus, then do 4 times 1, 4, 4 times negative 5, 4 times negative 20, it will, but let's first write it down, all over 2, now minus and minus makes a plus, negative 2 plus or minus was 4 and 20, can square root 24 simplify? No. Two root six. Two root six. Good. Now, can it simplify even more? Negative one plus or minus root six. Nice. Both this one and this one have a common factor. So the step I skipped was saying two on the outside, negative one plus root six over two and those crossed out. So smart. I am. All right, looking at examples four through six, we're going to talk about uh, the quadratic as a graph. 
So we, remember we talked about this in the very beginning that when you solve a quadratic its solutions are the same as x-intercepts and so when you have a parabola where it crosses the x-axis is the same as if you were to solve that same uh, equation. So looking at number four I know that a is negative but we can leave it like that for now and so the a is negative one b is six and c is negative nine. It, said, it says to find the x-intercepts of each quadratic fun function. <coughs> that still means to solve. It's just another way of asking you to solve. It says find the x-intercepts. So go ahead and plug it into the quadratic formula. Negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus four times negative one times negative nine all over two times negative one. Alex? Is there a reason why we used to do x squared minus six x plus one? The only reason I did it uh, this time is because I'm going to show you guys what the parabola looks like. Uh -huh. And I didn't want to change its direction. All right, so negative six plus or minus 36. Put down the first minus. Can you squared? Um, oh, yes. I, I, know, I guess I squared it my first step. 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 9. 36. Positive 36. This minus sign was there from the subtraction. And that's over negative 2. What's going to happen to the value inside our... Uh, zero. It's going to be 0. So really, we're not plusing or minusing anything. So it's negative 6 over negative 2, right? Because this is really negative 6 plus or minus root 0. Well, that's just negative 6. So that equals 3. So what happens, we can remember this, I talked to you about, uh, guys about this a while ago, when your quadratic only has one solution. What do we call that? Alana, what do you think? Something root. Yes, yeah, something double root. root. <laughs> double root. Yes, very good. So we could call this having one solution known as a double root and it only crosses or actually touches x-axis once. So if I were to graph it and I know it touches the x-axis once, the point at which it touches the x-axis is what part of the parabola? The vertex. The vertex. Nice. So if it crosses at one, two, three, and does it open up or down? down. So it means we're going to go over one, down one, over one, down three. There's what our parabola would look like approximately. Okay? Alright, let's go ahead and finish this up. Don't worry about the fractions. A is a half. Negative three. C is two. Four times a half, so our fractions will go away. First term of your inside the radical will always be positive. Four times a half is two. Two times two is four. On the bottom, two times a half is just one. So it's just three plus or minus root five. What type of solutions are these? Are they rational or irrational? Irrational. And how many solutions are there? There's two irrational solutions. So, yes, the plus or minus gives us our two solutions. Now, you guys keep this in mind that it's the parabola still crosses the x-axis mm -hmm. twice, but the solutions, the point at which they do, are not, uh, they're not integers, they're not whole numbers, they're not rational, they're not fun numbers. All right, now let's finish up and use the quadratic formula on number six. And attempt to find the, x, uh, the x-intercepts. Andrew, did you have a question? Yeah, on, on number two, why did we do that? Um, like, I'm sorry, what? For number two, why did like, we do like, that there are two 
on number two because the directions didn't want us to do that. We're, we were practicing solving and we're practicing describing. All right, so let's go ahead and plug this in. Opposite of B is going to be positive two. Negative two quantity squared minus four times two times three all over two times two. Uh, negative two quantity squared is four. Four times two is eight. Eight times three is twenty-four. I'm getting alarmed. What happens when I subtract the numbers inside the inside my radical, Marissa? Very good. So ne four minus twenty-four is negative twenty. We cannot take the square root of a negative. So we would say that this quadratic would have no solution. So think carefully. What would the graph look like if it had no solution? Yes, Alex? Um, up and down. Oh, no, wait. Think of it this way. We're finding, we're finding x-intercepts, right? Yeah. We found that there's no x-intercepts. So what does that mean practically for our graph? Vertical. Vertical. Marissa, what do you think? Well, it would still be a parabola. The problem is it just wouldn't touch the x-axis. So the vertex would be somewhere above the x-axis. The reason why it's somewhere above is because it opens up. Had it been negative, then it could have been somewhere below. All right, good job today.